Hello and welcome even to Faith of. I trust that your week has been good. I trust that you are basking even the fullness of the promises even of God. I want to encourage somebody today. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. I want you to be assured of this very truth that God is with you. God is in you and God is for you. You are a winner. You're born to triumph and winning and victory is sure even in the Christ. Praise God. All right. Um, when we started our journey together, looking at getting closer even to God, getting close to God, which is a series we started. And in this series, we have spoken about getting close to God, the value of quiet time, knowing, um, knowing the, um, growing in the knowledge of God and um, time may know you, um, smashing your idols. And today we want to take it further. Um, to something that is very crucial, something that is very pertinent. Uh, if you are going to be on the journey, like I tell folks, that our journeys are not always going to be uh, by the seaside, by the water side, uh, having everything to eat. There are times on our journey that spiritually, materially, financially, or any otherwise, uh, we might be what you call in arid places where you don't have an understanding of what is going on. And I perceive that one of the things that God will have us know as believers is that God will want us to be established in the truth of who he is. That leads us to what I want to talk about even today. I want you to first uh, share this link with somebody because today is going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be revelational. And it's going to transform your experience and your knowledge of God. It's going to give you a certainty as it concerns your vision, your purpose, and your journey even on this earth. A rider, tell somebody, put it on your status. It's time for it over. Share this link on, on, on Facebook. Share this link uh, on Instagram. Share it on, uh, on your website status and share it uh, even in all your social media spaces it is time to learn it is time to grow it is time to understand uh, even the lord um, even more hallelujah amen right today i would like to share with us something that i believe that you will need to know you need to know i want to try and give an explanation for some of these things uh, that you have been going through if you've been a believer for a while uh you've gone through these things these things happen around you and i want you to help i want to help you understand uh, even a lot of these things i've seen a lot of people get disappointed as it concerns god i've got i've seen a lot of people get wearied on their journey to god i've seen a lot of people uh, just just feel like i'm never going to do this journey anymore right because they they can't find an explanation for that which they are going through and today we want to seek you want to find that explanation very quickly uh let's get into god's word together let's read john chapter 8 and then we'll read verses 1 to 11. john chapter 8 verses 1 to 11. the bible says jesus went out unto the mountain of olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they are set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the Lord commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? These they said tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus took down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which had it been convicted by their own conscience uh, went out one by one. And beginning at the end, they even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee, she said, No man loved. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I want to share with us today something paramount in the heart of God. I believe you will need to know in this season and it's titled uh, When God is Silent. When God is Silent. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word will give light, give understanding unto us simple folks today. Father, simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. Our Lord, I pray that um, you make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, Daddy, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel. In Jesus' name, and amen. You know, as a child of God, one privilege I have had in my journey, in my years of working with the Lord, 
is that I've had God speak. I, I, I tell people that God speaks. I know that He speaks, not because I read it in the scriptures alone, but because it's a personal thing I've experienced. It's an experiential knowledge of God for me. I've seen Him speak to me concerning people, concerning my ministry, concerning my family, my life, concerning um, events, concerning other people. And I hear Him clearly, loudly, and I know that he speaks right and, and this is not just about me I, I tell them in church that you see we do not serve a god that is deaf or dumb so our god speaks the bible says in first timothy chapter 4 and then verse 1 that the spirit speaks expressly so we serve a god that speaks god speaks and actually the word does hear the lord which you will find again and again as it concerns the speakings of the lord in the holy scriptures was said two thousand seven hundred times in the Bible, does hear the Lord. That does hear the Lord tells us that the Lord speaks. So the Bible is actually full of the speakings uh, even of Jehovah. One thing I can assure you and tell you is that no man was great. No man did the will of the Father in scriptures uh, uh, that did not hear from God, did not hear that the Lord spoke to them. Right, speak concerning uh, patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You speak about David, you speak about Solomon. Uh, uh, these people, one essential character that you will see that is you will find in every one of them synonymous with all of their experiences uh, is that the Lord spoke with them. Uh, listen, I remember as a young child, I stayed in my house, in our house in the garden, and one day we were praying. And I, it's still one of those things that have been engraved in my spirit, engraved in my heart, uh, engraved in my memory. As we began to pray in our house that day, uh, I remember it was a family altar. And, and my mom just started speaking and uh, just started speaking in another tongues. And then suddenly I had her say, I, the Lord, I am here, does see the Lord. In Yoruba, she said, and I'm like, Oh, so so God was in our house. <laughs> As a young child, I couldn't open my eyes, but I really wanted to know what God was saying. I was so full of fear, full of reference, full of awe, that the God that they spoke to me about came to our house and started speaking even to us. So God actually speaks. The Bible says in Job 22, 21, 22, Acquit now thyself with him and be at peace. Therefore, God good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee the law from his mouth so that the law speaks and from the mouth of the Lord uh, you can receive uh, even the, uh, the old word what you call the creation uh, what you call the art is as a result of the speakings of Jehovah Genesis 1 6 Genesis 1 9 Genesis 1 11 120 124 126 and the Lord said and God said and God said so God speaks he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says. That's what the book of the ending says. The book of Revelations uh, 2 7, Revelations 2 11, 2 29, 3 6. Uh, the Bible says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Lord says. So if the Bible says, He who has an ear, let him hear, it is because the Lord speaks. Uh, so it's important for you and I to have an understanding that the Lord speaks. First John chapter 5, verse 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in that which I send it. Isaiah 55, and then verse 11. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 63, the Bible says, the Spirit quickens the flesh, profit nothing, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. God speaks. For Samuel chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, speak, Lord, for thy servant uh, heareth. Speak, Lord, uh, for their servant heareth. Knowing that God speaks, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But you see, what I want to speak about today is not just about the speakings of the Lord, right? It is about the fact that when a believer has come to that reality and the believer has come to that, uh, that understanding that the Lord speaks, perhaps uh, he has even started hearing God. He has grown in his work that he can hear the Lord. Now, the believer gets to his point at a particular juncture in his life, and this is where the trouble is, uh, where he is in a situation, uh, and then God seems to be silent. That's where the frustration sets in. There is nothing more frustrating 
than not hearing God in a particular time of need. There is nothing more traumatic than when God seems to be quiet and silent concerning a particular situation. Have you ever been in a midst of decisions? Have you ever been in the valley of decision? Have you ever been in that valley where you had to make a choice in your career, make a choice according, uh, concerning location or where to stay, what course to do, whether to do masters or to go get a job, who to marry and all of that and you are in the midst of life and then you are saying what is the Lord saying and it seems the Lord is quiet. I remember just some months ago a young man chatted me over and he said I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm done in the city where I am and I, I, I want to just make that decision. He said, but I've been praying to God uh, whether to move to the particular city. He said, but I cannot hear God. It seems that God is silent concerning that matter. Listen, dear friends, there is nothing more traumatic, more frustrating than when it seems to you uh, that God says nothing. Remember the story we started from John chapter 8 and then verses 1 to 11. They had caught a woman in the very act, the very act of adultery. This was not an accusation. There were proofs, there were witnesses. They caught this woman in the very act of adultery. And they brought the man, the woman to Jesus. You could say their intentions were not clean, their intentions were not good, but they caught this woman in the very act. So they asked Jesus, they told Jesus the situation and they told Jesus what had just happened, where they caught the woman from. And they said, what, this is what Moses said, what seeth thou? And the Lord was silent. Instead of the Lord to speak, the Bible records that he bowed, stood down, and he began to write on the ground. Uh, listen, have you ever been in that situation where you want the Lord to speak, but the Lord begins to do other things, but he says nothing as it concerning, that concerns uh, what you really want to hear. Maybe you are going through a situation you thought you had done the right thing, and that you are moving in the right direction, but God isn't saying anything. You expected he would have shown up, or at least speak, concerning this thing but he's saying nothing there are times and these are difficult times for believers uh, in perspective of how long you've been uh, a believer it's painful it's frustrating when god is silent i want to speak to those who are in that who are in that situation today i believe that the anointing of the lord upon me today is to be able to help you understand the doings of god even in the place and in the space where you think the lord is silent i want to help you understand this pain i want to help you decipher these struggles i want to help you see that the lord has a mission and the lord is ever present even in this painful and traumatic season of the silence even the silence of god why is god's silence painful to believers is because we know that he speaks and we find it difficult to understand why he will not speak at this particular time you have the somebody who have esteemed his word even more than your necessary food but here you have the lord seems to not speak. You have stood upon your rapper as a watchman. You have stood upon the words and yet the Lord seems to be quiet. Why is it painful? It is because on some occasions and circumstances before now, you have had the Lord speak. You have had him speak and it was expressly, it was clearly, it was distinct. But right now, the Lord says nothing. The Bible says, God who has sundry times spoken even to our fathers by the prophets, as in these days chosen, spoken through the Son. And you are asking yourself, what is the Lord? saying concerning this matter you are you find it painful again uh, because I, I, I may be more baffling uh, because people who are in that situation that you are in in other times and in other spaces have had the lord speak to them in fact your pastor came to church and he used an example about somebody wanting to locate or relocate uh, and the lord said to that person do this and the person did it uh, and here you are in that same situation and you cannot hear god you have inquired of the lord you have sought the mind of the lord and you can find other people hearing god in that same situation your pastor probably spoke as the concerns how the Lord told him that that's his wife. And here you are in that same situation seeking the Lord to tell you whether Sister Tina or Sister Tommy is your person. And yet, the Lord is silent. What a frustrating time. Oh, what a frustrating time. Unto thee I will cry, O Lord my God. 
Be not silent. Be not silent. That's, that's a prayer of the psalmist, Psalm 28. And then verse 1. Why? Because you see, sometimes without the voice of God, not sometimes, at all times, without the voice of God, uh, we are lost. We cannot navigate life on ourselves. You've come to depend on the voice of God to lead you. You've come to depend on the staff of the shepherd to guide you aright. But here you are. And it seems God is silent. God's silence is painful again because we have poured out our heart to him. And they tell that they have, we have been told that this God is loving. And here we are. We cannot even hear him. It's either he's not speaking or he doesn't care. Or he doesn't just want to say anything. What are you going to do? It's like when you write a WhatsApp note to somebody and then the person reads it. And then, I mean, I mean it's receipts, um, then it's still horn, you can see the blue mark, and uh, the person is still not replying. That's how he feels. It feels like every day you pray and there's no answer coming from heaven. You've asked God to supply, you've asked God uh, to meet your need, to send client. And every day, it seems like everything is still the way it is. It's still the way it is. It seems like, like silence in heaven. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven. You begin to ask yourself, why does it seem like the heaven over me is closed? I've prayed without ceasing. I've waited upon the Lord. But yet it seems that the heavens is open. Why is it that my desires are not delivered? Why is it that God is not answering my prayers? And in this time, why is also more frustrating is that you can hear the voice of other people. You can hear the voice of doubt. You can hear the voice of that situation. You can even hear the voice of the devil. But you can't decipher even the voice of God. The devil speaks. He speaks loudly. The situation is asking you. You've got to say something. You've got to do something. Your situation has become more desperate than before. What do you do? Again, why is this situation I'm going through more frustrating? Is that I've sat through scriptures and I cannot even find a specific place where that situation is addressed. I can't. So I know that when God is silent, my pastor taught me. And I've been taught by people that when the Lord does not speak concerning a situation, I should go look for principles in scriptures and then I should act according to that scripture. But I've searched all the borders in scriptures. I've looked at the margins of the Bible. And I can't find this place where this situation is addressed. Uh, where you need to choose whether to accept a job offer. Where you need to choose uh, whether to say yes to two persons asking you for your hand, uh, even in marriage. What do you do? For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place. The Bible says in Micah chapter 1, verse 3. But here it seems that the Lord does not come out to you. The silence of God. One of the most difficult things for anyone to experience when facing situations where the Bible does not categorically talk about what to do is God's silence. When we need to make a crucial choice and we have limited time and options, it would be rather better for God to speak. But at this time, God is just silent. Listen, dear friends, people in the Bible had to deal with the silence of God. Saul had to deal with the silence of God and he didn't do it well. He, God, the Bible says he consulted the Urim, he consulted the prophet, but the Lord did not speak to him through those means. So Paul Saul, Saul, the king decided he was going to go consult witches. He went through medium. That's the bad way in which you consult, especially when the Lord is silent. Somebody said he didn't want to do it. He wasn't going to do it. He did it because the Lord was silent and he really desperately wanted to hear from the Lord. Many people have also gone to prophets. Many people have consulted them fake prophets. They have consulted oracles, not because they wanted to, but they were in a situation where they wanted to hear from God, desperately needed to know what to do. But God seemed to be silent as he concerned them. Saul dealt with it in a very bad way. Jacob had to deal with it also. They, they dealt with the silence of God. Joseph dealt with the silence of God. God had given him a vision. God had spoken to him. But after he had the last dream, Many years went by and things didn't get better. We kept going from dungeon to dungeon, from prison to slavery. But yes, it 
took a long time and it was in the silence of God. He was thrown into a pit, sold into slavery, he was a slave for many years. The silence of God. It's important that you and I don't misinterpret the silence of God. It is one thing for God to be silent, it's another thing for you to misinterpret his silence. When you misinterpret God's silence, you may do something ridiculous which will bring shame to you or aggravate the situation that you are in. At a time in Abraham's life, God was silent. He had already called Abraham to be the father of many nations, but now he was silent. And in a moment of desperation, Abraham did something he shouldn't have done. In the days, uh, he did something he shouldn't have done. He took an alternative. He took an alternative. He, he went and took an alternative and Ishmael was born. Listen, uh, uh, in the days of Job, God was silent, but Job never did anything stupid. He said in Job 13, 15, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. God was silent on Joseph also, but he didn't get bitter. Dear friends, uh, there are situations in our life uh, that we would have to deal with even in the silence of God. What are you supposed to do? Listen, dear friends, when you misinterpret God's silence, you are going to get into error. At certain times, we aggravate the problem, but we actually just cause some, do something that causes even our destruction. For 430 years, uh, God was silent concerning the children of Israel. Though they were operating under a very dark taskmaster, but God was silent even as it concerns them. Many single brothers, as I'm speaking right now, are looking at me and watching this. Many people are saying, you know what, brother, this is what I'm facing. God has been silent as it concerns marriage. Many people in ministry, God has told them what the ministry would become. What the, the vision they saw is nothing like what they have been experiencing in the last five years. And they seek to pray, they talk to God, and they sat on their rafat. They've done all the strategies. They've read books, gone to conferences, submitted themselves to visions and all of that. And yet, nothing is changing. And they're asking the Lord, did I do anything wrong? Have I missed the mark? Have I gotten it wrong in any way? Yet, God is silent. Allow me to say to you that many times when we misinterpret the silence of God, we give the devil an advantage over our lives. When we misinterpret the silence of God, we aggravate the problem, we don't solve the issues. Allow me quickly share with you what God's silence is not. You know, when God is silent in my situation, I tend to believe and I tend to say certain things as it concerns the silence of God. Number one, God's silence does not mean he is not speaking. Sometimes it is not that God is not speaking. He may simply mean that, dear friends, you are deaf to his voice. The problem with many believers is spiritual deafness. It isn't that God is not speaking, it is that they are not deaf to the voice of the Lord. They can hear other voices, they can seek other voices, they can decipher other voices, but they cannot even sense or hear the voice of the Lord. It does not mean the Lord is not speaking. Behold, in this thou art not just, I will answer you. That God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he give not account of any of his matters. For God speaks once, yes, twice. Yet man perceiveth not. Job 33, 12 to 14. And verse 14 says, For God speaks once, yes, twice. Yet man perceiveth not. It is important at times for believers to know that God may have spoken. And so this problem is not that he is not speaking. The problem is that we cannot hear him. One thing about God that is that he would not leave us in limbo as it concerns hearing him. If you need to hear God, then you need to learn how to hear God. I tell believers, it's already too late when you are desperate to say, God, how does the Lord speak? Therefore, if you are in a Bible-believing church, if you are serious about spiritual growth, when you are not desperate, you begin to fine-tune your hearing capacity. 
you begin to fine tune here in God. Why? Because the more you fine tune the process, uh, the more you can hear him in desperate times. Uh, you do not begin to practice your hearing when the situation has arisen. Uh, you practice your hearing before that situation comes up. Number two, God's silence is not indicative of inactivity or lack of involvement in our lives. It may be silent, but he is not still. The problem is not speaking does not mean he is not working. He is not speaking does not mean he is not working. In fact, sometimes what we concentrate on is the speaking of God. We do not see the workings of God. So that in your life, you may sense that the Lord isn't speaking as it concerns that it does not mean that the Lord is not working as it concerns your life. One of the things you must understand about God is that he's always working. He is always working. Do not equate his silence for inactivity. Do not equate the silence of God for inactivity. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the old heart to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Second Chronicles 16 and then verse 9. The Lord is always working. Listen, dear friends, you cannot judge and assess God's involvement in your life by his speakings alone. You must understand that he is working behind the scene. What you will need is a change. What you need is transformation. Listen, God will not always speak. Sometimes God will just act. God does not talk too much. He is in the talk at He's always interested in getting the job done. Does he not speak? He speaks when it is essential. He speaks when it is important. But God is not a parent. He's not always speaking. Therefore, God is interested in working things out for us. And we must understand that. Another thing that the devil tells people, tells believers in the period of God's silence is that God's silence is an act of rejection. It's an act of rejection. One of the pressures that that silence exerts on us is that we begin to say God is not involved in our life. God has rejected me. He doesn't love, he not, he doesn't love me anymore. He doesn't love me anymore. He is never interested in my life anymore. That's what we say because we begin to doubt the involvement of God in our life. But the Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have been young, now I'm old. I have not seen the righteous forsake him, nor his children beg for bread. 37, 25 of the book of Psalms. Listen, dear friend, can a nursing woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. He said, but yet I will not forget you. He said, because I'm graving deep upon the palm of my hands, your words are continually before me. And that tradition says, I have tattooed you in the palms of my hand. I've engraved you in the palms of my hand. God may be silent. He doesn't mean he does not care. When God was silent, Jesus was on the cross. Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. Actually, the Lord did not forsake him. But he equated the silence of God to rejection. There was silence in heaven. And Jesus had nothing from God as he went through his tests and trials. Listen, dear friends, many times as we go through tests and trials, we equate that silence for rejection. Certain times the devil begins to pop, bring it up in our hearts, bring it up in our mind, our past deeds, our past iniquities, the past wrongs we've done. And they begin to say, you see, now you are going to pay for it. Now you are going to pay for it. Now you are going to... The moment you accept that, you say, yeah, God is judging me. God has rejected me. God has rejected me. There's nothing you are good for. That's what the devil says. But listen, dear friends, there is a plan for your life. And every bit of that plan is going to be fulfilled in God. God has a plan. God has something in store for you. The silence of God is not rejection. It's not, it doesn't mean God is checking the plan or is changing his mind concerning that plan. God's plan forever is yes and forever. Amen. What somebody also said, he said God's rejection, God's silence uh, equates with indifference. No, God is not neutral as it concerns the issue of your life. God is involved. You know, when you watch the game of football, sometimes my daughters come as I'm watching and they say, who are you supporting? Is it the team in red or the team in black? 
and I sometimes I say I'm, I'm watching the dream in red, right? Or sometimes I say it doesn't matter <laughs> anyone. You see, when you say it doesn't matter, it means you are a neutral fan. Oh, whether it's Manchester that wins or whether it is Arsenal that wins, it doesn't matter because you're a Real Madrid fan. You are just watching. You are neutral. Neutral means not participatory. You are not. You are not saying someone should win. You are not a fan of any of them. You are just there. You are not committed to anyone. You are just watching for the scenery. You are just watching for the time. You are just wanting to be entertained. Listen, dear friend, the Lord is not wanting to be entertained as it concerns our life. The Lord is not non-participatory as it concerns our life. The Lord is for us. The Lord is for us. To be indifferent means to be unconcerned. But God is concerned. God is concerned. The Bible says in Psalm 118, verses 5 to 6, I call upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. He said, the Lord is on my side. I want you to have that tangibility as a truth today, that the Lord is on your side. Listen, the affairs of life, the pressures of life, the things that happens to us and around us can make us doubt whether the Lord is for us. But there is a certainty of scriptures. The Lord is for me. The Lord is for us. The Bible says, Psalm, Matthew uh, 10, Matthew 10, 29 to 30, and not two sparrows sold for a fat in her, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father, but the very ears of your head are numbered. The Lord is for me. God's silence doesn't mean he's indifferent. He's the flesh of his, you are the flesh of his flesh, the bone of his blood. Listen, dear friends, oh, you are the bride of Christ. No man ate his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. God is interested in your prosperity. God is interested in your well-being. God is interested in your success. You might be going through the fiery furnace right now, just like Daniel went through the fiery furnace, just like the three Hebrews children went to the three the, the very furnace daniel went to the den of lion for their friends there was a tomorrow there was a hereafter the silence of god even in the midst of that fire for Shadrach, meshach and abednego did not hear god god did not speak but the presence of the lord was there there was the fourth man in the midst of the fire listen dear friends you may not hear god but there is a presence with you there is a presence with you his name is Yahweh. His name is Emmanuel. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. The righteous are important to him. That's what the Bible says. He's engraved you in the palm of his hands. Therefore, the Bible says you are the apple even of his eyes. To be indifferent means to be nonchalant, unfeeling, callous, detached, heartless, and unmoved. All of these things do not describe the person of God. God is concerned. God is loving. God's silence again doesn't mean approval or consent. You know, sometimes uh, when you look at the government, you look at the economy, you look at how well we pray and you see what is going on, somebody said God is not just concerned. God has given up on the matter of my family. God is not concerned. He's approving all that is going on around me. Listen, dear friend, the silence of God does not mean he approves or consent or condone what seemingly the devil or the system is doing with you. A silence unlike that of a man is not indicative of approval, but of long-suffering and endurance. The silence unlike that of man is not indicative that God does not feel what you are going through. The Bible says we do not have an eye preached. We cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Oh, God can be touched. You might be in a terrible situation, but he can feel what you are feeling. He can feel what you are feeling. Listen, dear friends, God is for you. God is saying, I do not approve what that happened, but I kept quiet. It's so silent does not mean consent. It's not, it doesn't mean cons consent. God will eventually speak. And allow me to say to you that God's silence is not forever. God's silence is not forever. And that's very important. That's actually like very cooling and calming. To know that even though it seems like he's silent now, the silence of God is not forever. 
The Bible says Job went through all he went through, sought the face, sought the eyes of the Lord, sought the voice of the Lord, and it seems he had none. From chapter 1 to chapter 38, there was no voice of God as it concerns Job. God was silenced and he was in the midst of life. He lost his children, lost his business, he lost his health. He's lost some of his friends. <laughs> but in, verse 30, in chapter 38, the Lord spoke. And the Bible says, and the Lord answered Job and said, God's silence is not forever. God will answer you. And he will say, he may seem for longer. He may think it's, it's been forever. God will answer you. He will answer you. Can I answer that question why? Why does it seem that God is silent at some times? So again, the question is, why is God sometimes silent? Why is he silent? Can I answer that question, why? Can I answer the question, why? Number one, because he's got nothing to say, right? So God does not teach chat, neither does he talk, because we expect or desire him to do so. He only does so when there is a need to. One reason the Lord is silent is because there is nothing to say. He's not involved in multitude of words. He's just got nothing to say. Somebody say, why will he not speak? Can't you see how desperate that situation is? Sometimes the Lord isn't speaking because he has said all he will say concerning that situation. Oh, he's not just speaking because, again, there's nothing to say. Because he understands the power of words. He understands the power of words. Sometimes we want God to speak. Why God knows what to do is to act. God will act instead of speak. And it doesn't mean he's not involved in your life. God therefore doesn't speak because he has nothing to say. Number two, because he has spoken earlier in other ways. He, you are expecting him to speak, but he's saying, I've spoken earlier. I've said what I need to say. Why do you expect him to speak again? Because he said all he needs to say concerning that situation. Allow me to say to you that the only guarantee of constantly and consistently hearing from God is by doing what the Lord has said in former times. Many times we expect the Lord to speak in the now where we have discarded the words of God in former times. He won't speak in the now because he knows you do not honor his word, neither are you committed to doing his word. So the Lord isn't speaking because he has spoken in other ways. I've seen people again say, you know what? God has probably spoken to you via the inner witness, but you, you want him to speak to you in a dream. You, you want him to speak to you in a dream. You say, let it be clearer. He said all he would say. There is an inner witness. You already know here is the voice of God. The inner voice had come. But you are saying, you know what? I want a vision. I want a vision. If, if that is you, Lord, let there be a prophecy. Let somebody prophesy. Let a man come to me and ascend to that which you have said. Let the pastor mention my situation as he's preaching, as he's getting into the prophetic. Let him speak about my situation. And God is saying, you know what? I've said all I need to say. Even as it concerns that, Psalm 62, verse 11, the Bible says, God has spoken once. Twice have we heard that power belongs to God. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be sweet to hear, slow to speak. We've got to be a people who are interested in hearing God and doing what the Lord says. Why is God not speaking? Because the time to speak is not yet. He's going to speak. He's going to speak, but it is not time to speak yet. Jesus did not speak when he was tried, but the day is coming when he will speak. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 7, the Bible says a time to reign, a time to sue, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. There is a time that everyone will have nothing to say. But there are times, uh, and the time is yet coming, where the silence of heaven uh, will be rented, uh, even with the voices of heaven. Listen, a man had joy by the answer of his mouth, uh, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? Proverbs 15 and then verse 23. God is silent when the time to talk has not come. There is a proper time to talk. If you were to be expected, even as human beings, uh, there are times and situations that you, you will probably have spoken to somebody or you want to speak to somebody and the time to speak to them has not come. Why? Because you know that if you speak now, they will not do what you say. They will not, they won't obey. They won't do what you said. You, they won't honor that wisdom. So at certain times, you let them go through their ways. You let them, because you've seen they are, they are made in their ways. They, they know what they want to do already. 
right? So you're just going to let them go along with it. You're just going to let them continue with it so that when they have seen the end of their wisdom, um, you step in and then begin to speak, then you will see them respond. And sometimes people say, why didn't you speak earlier? Why didn't you talk earlier? Oh, if you do that, they won't listen and they will accuse you of manipulating them. They will accuse you of controlling them. So at certain times, you let them do what they want to do. You will leave them alone. Speak times before you speak. Listen, the Lord keeps his word. The Lord uh, honors his word. The Lord values his word so that the Lord will speak. But he will speak to us even as it concerns when he's sure that we are ready and interested in hearing from him. Uh, somebody says, um, why is it that the Lord does not speak? Because certain times the Lord knows it is useless to speak to you. It is useless. You've made your point. You've made your way. You are just looking for somebody who is going to ascend to what you want to say. And many times the Lord has spoken. But you did not know that's the voice of God because you have made up your mind. This was what you are going to do. <laughs> this was what you are going to do. You have, you are really set on your ways. He doesn't want to speak to anyone or anything. He speaks to those who are led to be led by him. God is a shepherd who leads his sheep. And they are sheep that he knows that they aren't going to do anything, right? So the Lord will speak to you when he knows it is useful to speak. Now the Lord has seen that you are going to do what you are going to do. It's not the voice of the Lord that matters. It is that your mind is made up. So whether he speaks or not, this is what you are going to do. Whether the Lord tells you that that man is your husband or not, you are determined you are ever going to marry him. Whether the Lord tells you to stay in Nigeria or not, you are determined to leave Nigeria, right? So that the Lord is not speaking because he sees that your mind is made up. Hosea chapter 4 verse 17, the Bible says, Leave Ephraim alone, he is joined to idols. Leave him alone. Why call you me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say, Luke chapter 6 verse 46. If you know these things, happy are you. If you do them, 13, 17 of the book of John. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Uh, listen, why did Jesus not reply Pilate uh, when he asked him if he was the king of the Jews? Because it didn't matter. He really